Well, folks, the Razorback football team has the first three games of their upcoming schedule and time's out, and it's a load of crap. We're going to talk about that as well as more reasons to really be concerned about the Razorback baseball team being down in Hoover and some other Thursday nonsense. This is the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Thursday. You may notice a little bit of a different background that I have here on this podcast compared to what I have on my dry erase board as well as the Arkansas State flag. I'm down here in Florida on the beach, and it shows just how much I love this podcast where I am able to do this podcast for you while on vacation at the beach or just because I'm trying to kill time while I'm waiting on my other friends to get here whenever they may be. So either way, I'll try to get you updated as many podcasts as I can while I was on vacation. I mentioned that I would try. So this is the first crack at it. But, uh, you know, I really wanted to wait until I could find out if there was anything really significant to talk about. Because obviously the Razorback, Razorback baseball team being down in Hoover and some of the disappointments that are coming along with it. You know, some people could say that's worth talking about. Others are already like saying, hey, just in the season, we're done with this. <laughs> because everyone's really frustrated. But there did have some Razorback football news that came out today that I actually wanted to discuss. And a lot of you probably don't, uh, maybe even don't even know or don't even care about game times like I do and so many other people do. But Razorback football obviously is just 100 days away. We're, we're getting close to single digits, and we know that SEC Media Days will be around the corner when we get to hear from all different types of coaches and everything. And one of the things that I've always looked forward to seeing, especially with this upcoming year schedule, is because the home schedule is so great. Like Arkansas last year had a decent home schedule. I mean, the Texas game was awesome for sure. Uh, Mississippi State was a lot of fun. Auburn was fun, I guess. But like the Auburn game was at 11 a.m. That was kind of a bummer. Plus Arkansas lost. Uh, you know, the Missouri game day after Thanksgiving, there's always a little bit of weirdness going along with that. Then you had some other non-conference games that nobody really cared about. So the, the, the home schedule there in Fayetteville really wasn't that favorable. But this upcoming season, not only is the schedule going to be really fun, but your toughest games, possibly your most fun games, are all going to be at home in Fayetteville. So there was a lot of excitement surrounding about the possibility of not only having home field advantage and great crowds, but also being able to have really great opponents, interesting opponents, opponents you haven't played before, returns of certain coaches, all of that in Fayetteville, which could lead to a lot of excitement. And also, at least here recently, uh, I know the COVID year, you won't really count that, but Arkansas also has the second game of the season against South Carolina at home, which Arkansas really not that often has had games that early in the con in the in the season in conference. I think uh, during the Chad Morris years, I think maybe his second year, they played Ole Miss in the second game of the season, if I'm not mistaken. I think they, of course, in 2014, I think opened up against Auburn on the road in that, se in that game, which, of course, Arkansas lost both those games. But... We don't talk about that. South Carolina coming to town. Spencer Rattler is going to be there. Like there, There's just a lot of a momentum and fun and excitement surrounding the Razorback football season. So much so that in the first three games, you have some really intriguing matchups because we mentioned South Carolina and you haven't played them in quite a while. Uh, they got Spencer Rattler there. People think like that program's on the up and up, uh, but it's a very winnable game to start off your conference slate, which you can't always say that you start off 1-0 in this, in this conference, especially in this division. But your first game of the season is against Cincinnati, a team that was in the college football playoff last year, the first group of five team to ever make the college football playoff. Still Luke Fickles there, but completely different team. I don't think anyone's going to say that they're going to be just as good of a team as they were last year because of all the players they lost, but still a very formidable team that must be taken seriously in the very opening game. And then in the third game of the season, all these games being a favorable, mind you, you have the return of Bobby Petrino, which I still think to this day that they should have scheduled it during Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue just to really troll uh, Bobby Petrino. But still, uh, that's your third game of the season, and all those games are in favor. So there's like a certain drama, a certain interest, and a certain fun that's going to be had with these games in the beginning part of the schedule. Well, we found out just today that not only do we know about these games and the dates and the locations, but we also officially have the times and where these game and where these games will be played on television. And I'll tell you this, it I was pretty disappointed. 
I was pretty disappointed because the first game against Cincinnati is at 2.30 on ESPN. Now, being on ESPN, of course, is always cool. It's always a thing that kind of shows you, hey, you're getting put on, on the big dog, the number one station when it comes to sports. Uh, you know, you're on the, the mothership, mind you. You're you're right there where, you know, you got a big game at 11, a big game at 2.30, and a big game at 6, all on ESPN. Like, there's a certain thing that comes along with it. But because it's at, on September 3rd and it's at 2.30 in the afternoon, it's going to be hot as balls. And it's going to be pretty miserable on that front because we all know when it comes to Arkansas weather and especially the games in the early part of the season, it's always hot as balls. So the sun is going to be shining. It's going to be a great atmosphere, I know. And I guess it could be worse. It could have been an 11 a.m. game. But still, it just kind of – you were kind of hoping for a night game where it's a little bit cooler and it's, it's a really good quality opponent. But, hey, 2.30 ESPN, it, that's not the end of the world. That's not the worst thing in the world. And it's also seemed like Arkansas over the past few years has started off their season having an afternoon game. I think last year uh, in, their, in Arkansas's first game, it was about at 3 o'clock. So nothing's new there. But the game against South Carolina is also on ESPN. Great, great to get back-to-back -back games on ESPN, but it's at 11 a.m. <laughs> like last year, you had a stretch of like four straight 11 a.m. games. And one, a, a few of them were on the road. Like the Georgia game was on the road. The Ole Miss game was on the road. UAPB was in Little Rock. Uh, and then the Auburn game was at home. Like that was like four straight games where you had 11 a.m. games. 11 a.m. games are part of it. I get it. But that week, that's like, the to me, the best game in the SEC besides the Alabama-Texas game. The Alabama-Texas game is getting played on Fox at 11 o'clock as well. So you're going to have to compete against that game. But later that night, you got like Ole Miss and somebody and LSU and like Southern. Those are the night games on, uh, you know, whether it's SEC Network or ESPN2 or whatever. And I just sit there and I'm like, whose idea was this? I think also Florida and Kentucky may be a, a seven o'clock game too, which I would even hear arguments to maybe why that's a better game. But you can't sit there and tell me that more people are interested in Kentucky where, yes, they're a good team, but they're still a basketball school going up against a Florida team that was pretty bad last year, has a new coach in place. People are pretty high on him, but you can't tell me there's more intrigue in that than having two programs like Arkansas and South Carolina, both who are on the up and up, both who have big expectations, both who have really highly regarded quarterbacks starting for both of them, that suddenly, you know, that that's a better game. And then some people will say, well, you know, Will Levis over at Kentucky, he's supposed to be a top 10 pick. Okay, again, I'm fine hearing arguments for that. But you can't tell me that that's not a game, though, that you still want to have later in the day, at least in the afternoon. But instead, you they want you on ESPN. Okay, cool, but you got to do it at 11 a.m. So your first big SEC game at home against South Carolina is going to be an 11 a.m. game, which we already talked about how hot as balls it's going to be at 2.30 for Cincinnati. Well, guess what, folks? Guess what it's going to be on the next week? It's still going to be hot as balls, only this time towards the end of the game, the sun's not going to go down. The entire time the sun is going to be in that stadium and it's going to be hot as balls. So I, I did not like how they scheduled this. I did not like how they set it up. I felt like Arkansas kind of got screwed in the whole thing. But, you know, it, it, the games are going to get played. It doesn't matter. Sam Pittman and the team's not going to complain. They're not going to get mad about it. They're not going to get frustrated. Only people like me who have nothing better to do with their lives are going to get frustrated with it. But it, it's just a load of crap. Now, the next game against Missouri State and the return of Bobby Petrino, that game is going to be at 6 p.m. So that's nice, but it's not even going to be on TV. It's going to be on the SEC Network Plus. So unless you have streaming capabilities, it's the only way you're going to be able to watch that game, which I would argue that if you're watching this on YouTube, I really hope that you do have streaming capability. If you know how to access YouTube and watch my podcast and you don't have an ability to watch a game on SEC Network, you, you need some friends. You need some, some people to help you out because there's no excuse for that. But the thing is, is that this game is going to have at least the night game atmosphere. Hopefully Arkansas is 2-0, and if they're 2-0 and starting the season, they will for sure be a top 20, maybe even a top 15 team, depending on how things go. And there'll still be a lot of fans there that show up, especially to see you know Bobby Petrino come back. I expect Arkansas to win that game. And I think that Arkansas, of course, is the better team. But there's going to be a lot of intrigue going along with that and people wanting to see that as well. So either way, we know the first three games. And I'm just kind of disappointed. I was hoping for a night game. 
uh, at least in the Cincinnati or South Carolina game. But instead, you get the night game for the game that you don't want a night game for. I would have been perfectly fine with an 11 a.m. game against Missouri State. And also, you know, they always say that, you know, 11 a.m. games usually benefit the road team. Well, it didn't benefit Arkansas much last year being the road team or even any team because they lost three of the four games they had at 11 a.m. And the only game they won was against UAPB. Uh, so three of the conference games they lost were all at 11 a.m. So maybe I'm a little bit weary of that. Maybe that's something I don't really like. But uh, still, it's it's going to be fine. I think it'll be all right. I still think Arkansas is going to start 3-0 in these games. And I think that, of course, when they face off against Texas A&M and hopefully win that game and go down to Arlington, they'll make a big, big, big game for Alabama coming home on October 1st in Fayetteville. So uh, hopefully it all goes according to plan. But the schedule got released. I'm going to complain about it because I'm a complainer. I'm a whiner. And you're just going to have to deal with it here in the first segment of Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You heard me tell you about Built Bar and all the things that they have going on with all the different flavors to choose from. Listen, we're all trying to be healthy as much as possible. We're all trying to be as convenient, as, as great as we can be getting ready for beach season, all of those things. But we also like snacks. You know, you like going to the convenience stores and getting you some chocolate bars and everything and stashing them in your office, trying to hide them from the life. I get it. I understand it. But the thing is, is that Built Bar is not only something that's extremely healthy for you with 17 grams of protein and only 130 calories, but they have so many different delicious flavors to choose from, and it's covered in 100% chocolate. Seems too good to be true, but it is true. It tastes great. It's healthy for you. And the best part about it is because you listen to this podcast, you can go to built.com, enter it in promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your next order. It's as simple as that. doesn't matter how many you order. doesn't matter what flavors you get. doesn't matter anything about it. Just go and make sure you enter in that promo code Locked 15 for 15% 15 off over at built.com. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, I got to talk about the Razorback baseball team for a little bit because they're really starting to uh, be concerning and they have been been concerning maybe some of you are going to say well i've been concerned since you know two months ago well okay fine that's fine i have not been but now i'm concerned i'm concerned with the fact that arkansas has only has lost three of their last five sec series in regular season i'm concerned in the fact that they lost to alabama in the first game of the sec tournament once it finally got played and the reason they lost to them was nothing because of their own mistakes it was their own mistakes you had bad throws you had bad decisions you had bad plays and Arkansas lost four to three, and now they're going to be facing Florida tomorrow because of the whole weather crap that's going on in Hoover and you know, the nonsense that's all there. Uh, they're going to have to go and, and wait till tomorrow's game uh, to see if they advance in the SEC tournament or if they just go home and get ready for the regional and travel to wherever they're going to end up traveling because right now it doesn't look like they're hosting. But uh, they'll be facing Florida. Florida got trounced by Texas A&M today, 10 to nothing. And so that uh, there's that. And, you know, I, I'm not I'm not giving up on the season. I'm not saying that it's you know, everything's all bad and we just need to fold up and call it a day and you know just end the season and move on and maybe make some changes. Like I'm not to that point yet, because as long as the team's going on, especially in postseason play, which they're going to make postseason, uh, you can never count anybody out, especially where so many times in Dave Van Horn's history here at Arkansas, there's been times where they haven't had the best team. They uh, haven't had they maybe even the best finish to a regular season, but they're able to at least make some noise in postseason play and get to the College World Series, which let's be honest, if this team at this point made it to the College World Series, go crazy, go nuts, go wild, have a party, you know, pop champagne bottles. Even if they go 0-2 in barbecue, that's still a phenomenal season considering where they looked like they were right now to make it to that point. So I'm not, you know, folding it all in. I'm not saying it's all over or anything like that. That being said, though, if this team doesn't show me something in the game against Florida, which, you know, it's the SEC tournament, so it's not the biggest deal in the world, but if they don't show any fight in that, and we know Dave Van Horn's out, which we, we don't know exactly what his illness is having him out for, uh, but that's got to be something that kind of concerns you as far as what's going on, but either way, if they don't show any sort of fight and against Florida, and then they go into the regionals on the road and they get trounced 0-2 in barbecue, which I'm not saying it'll happen, but let's be honest with each other. It's a possibility. It's a likelihood. It absolutely could happen. 
then suddenly things start to really change about, okay, so what do we do here? You can't just sit idly by and say, all right, well, we're just going to keep it the same thing. Status quo, you know, is just, uh, you know, shrug your shoulders back. Yeah, it's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. It's like, no, people are going to want some sort of change or some sort of uh, movement, something that's going to at least give them a little bit of a hope to understand, hey, this past year was an unacceptable result. Not an unacceptable year, but an unacceptable result because of this team is better than what they've been showing. Like, that's what it comes down to. I, I've never played college baseball, and I've talked to college baseball players, and they know about the difficulties that come along with it and how tough it is. I understand that. I think we all understand that. And I don't think anyone's saying that it had to be a national championship or bust or even a college world series and bust. I don't even think it was to that point. But knowing how good this team is and how they're supposed to be, for them to be losing the games in the fashion that they're losing them is just, it's bad. Where it's self-inflicted wounds. It's mistakes that they're making on their own. And you have a lot of talent on this team, especially in the pitching situation where they've shown shown that they have some guys that can really throw some gas. You got two freshmen that are on the all SEC freshman team in the pitching staff that, you know, they're phenomenal. They're great. And you really are excited about the future that they'll be able to bring. But I'm sorry, but the hitting has been a big problem here. The, the, the lack of consistent in hitting. Uh, there's been some defensive flubs, especially against Bama, that you just can't happen. Just can't have and it can't happen. And I think that that's what makes this team so frustrating is it's not that it's the results necessarily as much as it is knowing this team is capable of more. And instead of playing their best baseball right now, they're playing their worst baseball. Like right now is the worst this team has looked all season long. And that's not what you want. That's not what you want. So, but again, I completely and totally understand that things can get turned around quickly. Thing, things can change. Things can happen. All of that stuff it just takes a couple of movements here and there. But I don't feel good about it. I, I don't like where it's at. I don't like how, you know, they, they just the, the whole aura and demeanor of, of the team is looking right now. So maybe they can get it switched around. Maybe they can change it up. Maybe something can happen. But right now, it just it doesn't give me a whole lot of hope, folks. It doesn't give me a whole lot of hope. So we'll see. Maybe I'll come back on a podcast next week and talk about completely different things and be like, oh, man, this team's doing big things. Watch out. But probably not. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, as of right now, doesn't feel good, but we'll see how the rest of the postseason draws out. We got more coming up on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, so final segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I just got a few minutes here, and I just want to, again, explain things that I am here at the beach. And actually, I don't even know. Devin, where are we at? We are at Santa Rosa Beach. Thank you, Devin, for that. Um, so we're, we're hanging out here, and I'm going to be here for from now until probably next Wednesday. And then um, I'll be back in full force on Thursday for uh, the radio show and the podcast. So uh, the scheduling will be a little weird. I know that. You know, Razorback softball's got their thing going on, which hopefully they make the, the World Series this weekend after beating Texas. Let's hope that happens. Uh, and I know that then Razorback – and like one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure I have access to doing the podcast, because I always feel like anytime I'm away or on vacation, something crazy happens. Like, you know, some somebody gets fired, somebody gets hired, somebody dies, you know, something crazy like that where, you know, we have to, we have to talk about it and everything. So uh, I, I have my podcasting equipment. I don't have my laptop charger because I'm an idiot and I forgot it. So we'll see how much juice I can make uh, last in this whole podcasting thing. And maybe I can go borrow it from somebody. But either way, uh, just kind of be on the lookout for that. Because I know a lot of you consistently listen and watch the podcast at particular times of the day and of um, the night or whenever you do. So I'll try my best to keep you updated. I'll try my best to do all those things, too. And I'll try my best to to make sure nobody steals my equipment and does a podcast of their own and tries to post it, which with this friend group. I'm never counting it out, so we'll just have to wait and see. But either way, appreciate everybody listening into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have, and we'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.